Today we're making some gorgeous spooky house decor. I'm Brandy and this is Making It My Own DIYs. The first project is going to be a owl light box. I'm going to use the frame that I thrifted and this cup that I thrifted. Did you know that on the inside of these cups there's actually a plastic film with the pictures on it? Yes, so if you just crack the top you can pull that film right out. And now you have something you can use in your decor. So if you have a broken cup that's got a crack in it, you can always take the insert out and use it in your DIYs. I'm gonna cut out the section that I would like to use. So it's gonna be the moon and the owl section with just a bat on it, or maybe two bats. I'm gonna trim it out carefully. And then when I get to the bottom, I'm gonna be sure that I round it because it's actually kind of square on the bottom of the moon, but I wanna round that out so it looks better in my frame. Now, once we've got the piece that we like, we can just put it down on the glass. Now, this is one of those frames that has a glass in the front and the back, so there's no solid background. You're, it's almost gonna look like it's floating in there. So I'm just gonna use some double stick tape to put this down you can also use some Mod Podge, but be sure that when you put the tape down or the Mod Podge, that you put it down on the opaque parts, right? If that makes sense, not on the clear sections because you don't want to see your tape in there. So if you put it behind the sections that are colored, then you won't necessarily see it. It'll kind of blend in. So you're just going to press it down wherever you put your pieces until you get it in the right spot. And right here, I had a little little section. I thought I could use just a little more tape, so I'm sliding a little piece under there and it is sticking to my dry fingers. Craziness. All right, so this is what it's going to look like. Such a pretty little vintage picture. I love that. That little owl is precious. All right, I'm gonna put the frame on the back or the back glass on there. And this actually did not come with both pieces of glass. It only came with one. So I used an eight by 10 from another frame and took it out. And it's like an older glass, so it's kind of frosty looking. Totally fine, it's clean, it's gonna be fine. All right, so on the inside of that glass, I'm gonna add some hot glue and some of this black paper shred. You can definitely get this type of shred at Dollar Tree. If you can't find black, you can use brown or whatever coordinates with your picture. I use hot glue here, and I do suggest you use your finger protectors if you're going to do this, just so you don't burn your fingers. Then cut off whatever is going to be in the way of putting your back frame down, or your back glass. And then I'm going to take a string of lights that I have, and I'm just going to squish them down and press them into that grass. Well, the shred very very pretty it's on a copper line so it is going to be a yellow light rather than a bright white light y'all please excuse my voice everybody in the house has been sick for a couple of weeks now and my voice is still weird it's kind of in and out and scratchy sounding and my throat gets kind of weird so bear with me i'm going to try my best to get this out for you okay so i'm going to use some hot glue here and I'm gonna go all around the edges. You could use like a silicone, um, if you have like the um, silicone sealers like you use in the bathroom, that would be perfect here. And then you wouldn't have to worry about burning your fingers. But I'm just gonna use this to seal in my edges. And I have a little gap in the bottom and you can see that I glued the line off to the side. And I'm just putting a couple of layers on here because I don't want this glass to slip out. It is actually above the frame. So I'm gonna use a little extra protection in the corners. I'm gonna use some hot glue and a little tab of paper. I've got it cut like in a triangle so you won't see it through the glass when you have it sitting up and ready to display. I don't wanna see that. So it kind of disappears. And we flip it over and turn on the lights. And isn't it cute? I love light up projects. I hope y'all are not tired of seeing those from me because they just look so magical and kids really love them too. And for the ones of us who are young at heart, we love them too. 
The next project is going to be the Victorian Eek. Now, the Eek I'm referring to is from Dollar Tree, as well as this little, it's like a little skeleton ornament, I guess. They come in a, a pack of several. Here's the Eek sign. It's been done a million ways, and I have never done it, so I'm doing it for the first time here. You're going to use any type of Victorian or vintage-inspired paper that you like. Um, you can use scrapbook paper. You can use old greeting cards. You can use whatever you can find. And then Mod Podge, of course, and a little flat brush, which I love. And a piece of paper that happens to match the theme. So I'm going to start by using Mod Podge on my letters. And I'm just trying to get it right on the top right now. I don't need it on the sides because we're only applying that paper right on the front of the sign. So it's not necessary. Continue around till you have a nice even coat like this. And then we're going to flip the paper right on. This paper is really cool. It has a, uh, a friend of mine, Marsha, gave me a bunch of paper stacks. And this one has, in the middle of each of those pieces, it almost looks like a little skeleton face. So I thought it was perfect for Halloween. Not to mention, it's kind of grungy looking, kind of old and Victorian, which is really cool. So I'm just going to make sure I have no bubbles, no gaps. I want everything nice and flat. I'm going to take my utility knife. I broke the other one, stepped on it and broke it. So now I'm using... A heavy duty one. I have no idea where it came from and I am going to just start by trimming off the biggest excess pieces. We don't want to do all that little inside work until we get done with all the big stuff and doing these outside pieces is fairly easy. You're going to go around your entire project and get them off. Then I'm going to use my little emery board here. You can use sandpaper, a sanding block, you can use a finger sander, whatever you have, and just get that down where it is, the paper is right up against your wording. Now I'm gonna take these pieces, which by the way, I found a big stack of these at the Goodwill bins. They are absolutely beautiful. And I knew when I saw them, I was gonna be using these for Halloween, and then I have some I'm gonna be using for Christmas, and I cannot wait. So I'm gonna make these look really old and distressed. They already look fairly distressed, but by peeling off the edges, you're really gonna make them look tattered and old, and I love that. This project just turned out so much better than I anticipated, so I'm so happy to share it with you, and I'm really, really hopeful that you will feel inspired to do something similar to this, and if you do, I would love it if you will email me your pictures. I've gotten several people who have given me their pictures of the projects that I've inspired them to make, and it is very exciting to see them. I'm loving your work. You are a very talented community of young and young at heart gentlemen and ladies, and I'm very happy to see that, that you're feeling inspired in this channel, and I love that. So now I'm going to take my antiquing wax and just a little bit of black and I'm going to go around those edges. The edges, because they're frayed, are really going to allow that to cling to it. So the color is going to cling to it and look how old that looks. Yes, that's exactly the look that we want for this project. So I'm going to go around to all of the pieces that I've torn off and I just chose a few that I thought would look good and that maybe looked a little more Halloween themed. And then you can just take your finger and you can just rub this. We want it to look grungy and just like it's been in a trunk forever or in an attic. You know, you get it. Now I'm going to take a little brush. This one came from Dollar Tree in a pack of three, I think. They work really well. I'm happy with them. Uh, just in case you're looking for some of these brushes. And I'm going to go around on the inside and around the edges of this entire word. This is going to add a little more shadow, a little more dimension. It's going to add more interest, and I just really love it. Very grungy, right? I can't think of a better word. Aged, old, distressed, grungy. Yeah. Now is the fun part. We get to put these pieces down all over the place. These do not have to fit. You don't have to fussy cut them. Don't worry about that right now. That's not, that's not our goal right now. It is just to get those pieces on the page. Now, you make sure everything's dry before you start Mod Podging anything down. You know, this project's going to take a little time because you've got to let your layers dry in between. But if you're doing several projects, like I do several projects in one sitting, then you can just let the stuff that's painted set it aside, 
and work on the next project. If it's got glue that needs to be dried, set it aside, work on the next project. Okay, so now, now you understand that part. Let's get all these pieces on here where we would like them. I'm just gonna go along and add these down wherever they just kind of make sense, where they kind of fit, where I feel like they're going to be seen pretty well, you know? And they don't have to be sitting up straight. They can be sideways. They can be, you know, overlapping one another. Think about if you've ever scrapbooked before. That's kind of the idea. You know, just put it in there and just jump journal it all down on this sign. I love, love Halloween and I love Halloween creations and I love bringing them to you and I'm gonna be very sad when I stop doing Halloween projects because it's just so much fun to me. It's so magical and you know just got that childlike whimsy. It's exciting. You know, the change of season is exciting and it just brings me a lot of joy to do this. Like I have a ton of ideas and I just don't want to stop doing it. It's craziness, isn't it? But Christmas is fun as well, and I have a lot of ideas to bring you for Christmas. So I hope that if you are here for the Halloween, that you will stay tuned for all of the Christmas. Okay, so now everything's in place. We're going to Mod Podge it, let it dry. And I mean let it dry completely before this step. This paper is going to be very stiff. All of the little pieces that are hanging over are going to be very stiff, which makes them easy to cut going to go around there and trim off all of the excess which is the backs of the the decorative pieces that you put on there the little um, pictures that you put on there and just twist them and bend them and tear them off you know doesn't have to look perfect check this out when it is dry oh my goodness look at it it's leathery and old I love it Okay, so now I'm just taking some of that antiquing wax and I'm going to use the brush that had Mod Podge on it. So I have a combination of Mod Podge and antiquing wax, which makes no difference whatsoever. You don't have to do it like this. It's just the brush I had there, so I decided to go with it. You know, some of crafting is an experiment. I'm gonna use little blocks to help support this so it will stand up on its own. The part that is going to be glued on, we do not cover with antiquing wax, just like the bottom of the eek is not covered with wax either. I'm going to just use a little bit of, I'm kind of trying to put some, where you can really tell what the letters are. So I kind of divided the eek, and now I am kind of, kind of, I am sort of, you know, outlining some of the places. So see, no, no, they're stressing on the bottom of that because I want the glue to stick. So I'm using wood glue and some hot glue and putting two blocks side by side to make it stand up. Now let's add our beautiful little skeleton man. We're going to make him so happy and not scary. He's smiling anyway. He's not scary, is he? Nothing scary about a skeleton. We all have them inside of us, don't we? That is not scary. All right, so we've removed his arm and we're going to place it at a different angle. Same thing on this side. He's going to have one arm that is out to his side like he's putting his arm around you and the other arm we are going to make him wave so i'm just going to reattach it at the shoulder now a lot of people are telling me that you can put these in boiling water and then you can dunk them into ice water and that's an idea if you want to do it that way but for me in crafting for you guys i want to do this as quickly as possible to give you the ideas so that you can use them for yourself now the feet are at the wrong angle for him to be standing up straight. So I'm just gonna take them off right above the ankle. Gosh, that sounds terrible, doesn't it? This is not for the faint of heart. I'm gonna trim off the ankle <laughs> and I'm going to reassemble him just like we did his arms. So I'm just gonna go ahead and put the feet down on the bottom, see where he's gonna be standing so I can get an idea of where his arm's gonna be back there. Excuse the fuzziness of the camera right now. It was focusing on the top of the E rather than the feet, but I think you get the idea. You're gonna add some glue here. You're also gonna add a little bit of super glue so that nothing pops off. I did not do that and I had to fix that later, but do it now, it's the best way, best way. All right, now on the top of the feet or the ankle area, I'm gonna add a little more hot glue and super glue and then place his legs back down on the feet and I'm just holding his little arm behind until that glue dries, just like that. 
Now to keep him from popping off, because there is, you know, we got the antique wax on there. Glue might not work, so I'm gonna use a shallow staple and attach his arm. And look how cute! Now he's not scary at all. The next project is going to be a trinket box. This little beauty came from Goodwill, the outlet. And I don't know what this was. Does anybody know? Uh, maybe a cigar box, maybe a candy box, maybe just a little jewelry box. But it did have a broken hinge. Nobody picked it up, so of course I grabbed it. That hinge doesn't bother me. I'm going to cover this with a little bit of satin black paint once it is dry. And I did one coat. I left it a little bit crazy looking intentionally because I want it to look aged. So you can see some of the gold is still peeking out. You can see here it's got a lot of raised areas, which is perfect for what we're going to do. I'm going to use some of this gold and I am going to add some gold back into this box. Now, I like this brush. This is a stencil brush. This is not actually what it's intended for, but I'll tell you why I like to use it for this kind of project. It has stiff bristles and it is precise enough that you can poke it down in those deeper areas without the bristles splaying out and paint going all over the place. So if that makes sense to you, if you've painted before, I think you know what I'm talking about. This makes it so much easier. A soft brush just does not do it for me in this type of a project. This is just more precise and I just, this is just the way to go for me. And hopefully that will be something that will help you too if you have a problem with little paint flecks all over the place or your paint squishing out everywhere. So now I'm gonna take a bigger brush and start brushing over here. Again, if you have seen me craft, you know when I am doing this type of distressing or any type of distressing really, I like to start off very light and then I build up to the point that I really like it. I have found this helpful because I don't have a ton of extra that I'm trying to wipe off or repaint to cover or whatever the matter might be. I don't like all of that. I don't like that kind of drama. I don't like that kind of busy work. So I just like to build up and hopefully that will be something that will help you. All right, I'm gonna go over my little hinge here. And we are gonna make our own little, it's gonna look like a lock, I guess, a little decorative piece after a while, no worries. Continuing along, I'm gonna go over the little raised ridged area here. I want to make those kind of goldish. The box would have been okay on its own maybe if you wanted to use it like that. But I'm really, I really wanted to do the black and gold for Halloween. The next Halloween video I have for you has got some silver and black. So I'm excited about that. I want the inside to be a little bit heavier on that top because that naturally wouldn't be as worn down as the outside, right? So that's why I'm giving this a little, little more of a coating. And I have this beautiful paper that we're gonna use to line the bottom. So I'm gonna flip it over, trace it, and then I'm gonna go toward the inside of a line so that it will be smaller and it will fit down on the inside. So I'm always hopeful that I have a good fit when I cut these out, and it generally works. I'm gonna add Mod Podge in the bottom and grab a foam brush and just get a nice even coat. There is a little lip and some depressions down in there, but it won't matter. Once the Mod Podge dries, once everything's pressed down and it dries, it's gonna hold it down. So that's gonna be fine. And this is a decorative piece anyway. This is not something I'm gonna be using every day. Okay, so the fun part is now you can put whatever you want on the inside. If you wanna use this for a prop, you can put anything you want in there. If this was a witch's jewelry box, she would wanna have her bones in there and her wand in there, right? And her rings. So this is a cupcake pick from Dollar Tree. It's a little bat. I'm just giving him a brushing of gold, just a dry brush. And then I'm gonna add him on here. I cut him off and look at that. He's cute there. Could also use one of those spider rings. That would be really pretty too. That's the great thing about crafting. You can do it your own way. And I always want you to do it your own way. Now, poison candle. I didn't know what else to name this one. It's poison on the napkin, right? So we're gonna use a flameless candle. This one is about mm, six, seven inches tall. The napkin's from Dollar Tree. It's a Mod Podge. 
we're going to use some of the shimmer mist, some gold paint. Okay, we're going to start by taking our napkin, laying it out. We are going to tear the bottom corner because this is the easiest way to separate the layers in my opinion. So I'm just going to tear that part. It's not the part we're going to use, so it doesn't matter that it's torn. And I'm going to trim off what I need. I've already laid the candle down. I know how tall it basically needs to be. And I'm going to trim off the black edges, but I'm going to leave the bottom edge black. So, I love this napkin. They did a really good job on this one. There's a really pretty spider one too that I saw in some people's videos, but I can't find that one at my store. So, this is what I'm going to use. I'm going to trim this off so that I don't have a big overlap, but I do want it to overlap a tad. So, I could have had two bottles and one raven, or two ravens and one bottle. Whichever way you want to do yours is totally fine. I'm going with the poison here. I'm going to add Mod Podge all over my flameless candle, and this sticks nicely. It does have like a waxy coating, so I guess you could heat it up, whatever, but this is just the quickest way for me to show you how to do it. I'm going to add it down so that it is nice and lined up with that black line on the bottom. That's going to be our border line. And just gently, gently fold and press. You have to be careful. This is one ply. This is a Dollar Tree napkin and it could tear. So you got to be very careful. So now I'm going to go over the edge and I'm just going to brush away from the seam so that I don't pull it back up. And I'm going to go all the way around the candle with the Mod Podge. I'm going to use a lighter to take the edges off the top. Be very careful. This is not for children. My videos are not for children. If you don't want to do it this way, you can just fussy cut it. No problem. Now is the fun part. I'm going to trace the bottles and the bird with the hot glue. We're going to raise this up so we can give some dimension. I'm going to go around the neck of the bottle and just carefully go around the entire thing. Now this is my Sure Bonder glue gun. It is not a fine tip gun, but it is, it's working fine for this project. It gave me fits for a little while, but I guess it was clogged up. If you leave your gun on too long unattended, the glue will melt in there and then it kind of clogs up a little bit, but you can get it out. All right, so we're going to continue around. I want to do the, the head of the skull, the crossbones, the details of the feathers, and then when it's all done, it looks like this. And then you're going to have to set it aside and let it dry. Once it's dry, you can start adding like a drippy wax edge. This is new for me too. I've seen lots of people do it, but I've never done it myself and I thought it was perfect for this grungy poison candle. I think this is going to look great with the eek sign. So I'm going to continue around and just make a line of glue and let it drip and run down. If your glue is drying too quickly, maybe you don't have a very steady hand, you can use your uh, hair dryer or you can use a, a heat gun like I have here and just turn the candle so nothing warps, but let that glue kind of run down a little bit. And I did um, three layers of this on the top and I just kept adding to it and letting it drip down so it looked like a very old candle that's been used a lot. It's in an old scary haunted house or beautiful, you know, it's your opinion, whichever way. It might not be scary to you. And we want it to look like it's been there forever. We want it to look like it's been a well-used candle. We want it to look like it's been sitting in the dust and the grossness, and that's where this little shimmer spray comes in handy. Check this out. Look at the automatic age you get with that. Perfecto. I did not know what this stuff was when I picked it up at Goodwill. I had no idea what it was, but I, somebody told me it was for crafting, so I grabbed it and then started playing around with it and realized what a perfect way to age something. So yeah, I mean, if you've ever used this stuff before, you can put in the comments where it came from, um, what you use it for, because I am I'm loving it, and I will definitely be putting this back to use next year for Halloween as well. All right, so I'm going to use some of that black and the antiquing wax and just go all over this. I really want to get in the spaces where the wax is and where the hot glue is. Well, you know, you know what I mean. 
so that it looks really like dust has been in the wax and it's been just sitting up. Oh yeah. Yes, this thing looks very old. Would you agree? Do you think it does? I think that just really made so much of a difference. Mm-hmm. The next project is our candelabra. Forgive me for missing footage, but this had a cork on it. I took the cork off. Now I'm going to use a long bead and a candle holder. A singular, single little candle holder. I'm going to take this bead and I'm going to fill it up with glue. Well, partly with glue on both sides. Then I am going to place it over the stem where the cork was. Careful, careful, because glue will come out. But look, I'm going to use that glue again, recycling my glue so that I can put the other bead down in the candlestick. All right. Once it is dried, I'm going to take some black paint and go over the bead. So this will now look like part of the candlestick or the candelabra. Same thing on the bottom. We don't want to see that. I'm going to take a little piece of stem, add some glue to it, and then fit that bead right over the top and it's small enough that it fits right beside the screw with no problem. You do have to hold it there until it dries so that the sides of the candle will be balanced and you don't have one higher than the other like it's a scale instead. I'm going to dry brush some gold all over it just because that is the theme in this video. We have all kinds of gold and I'm going to continue around and just go over it lightly. Again building up little more here and there wherever you want to use more accent you can like around the cups where the candles are held you could do that you could color the whole thing gold if you wanted but I love the way this looks these are the emergency two pack of candles from Dollar Tree we're gonna give them a makeover I'm gonna use just a little bit of masking tape and I am gonna go just put this around the light bulb part of both of these candles to protect them because I'm going to spray paint them with some of that same black satin paint. Once they're dry completely, I'm going to peel off the paint and the little candle part is still nice and clean. Now the thing with these particular candles, of course they do take AAA batteries and they don't come with them so be sure you buy some. They have a white light, which is not my favorite, but I'll show you how to fix that. I'm going to use some of these little, little foam tape pieces. You can get something similar at Dollar Tree. Whoops. And I'm just going to use these to stick these down in the little candle cups. And they'll stay there nicely. I said nicely again. My mother informed me that I say nicely a lot. So if that bugs anybody, I do apologize. Okay, so you can see there's white light there. If you don't care for the white light, you can paint the little light. So I'm using some sunflower paint in yellow, and I'm just going to go over this. And you can see as I'm painting it, it changes the color to a yellowish color. You can put as many coats on here as you want to, but I don't mind it being streaky because a candle light is streaky anyway, and you can't tell when it's lit. But you can see the difference now on the light let them dry. We're going to add a little spider decorative piece right on there just to really give it a little something extra. And here are the projects of our home sweet spooky home. They're all displayed together. I think that they look nice together. If you like this video, would you mind giving me a thumbs up because it's very helpful. It lets me know you're enjoying it. It lets YouTube know that you're enjoying it. On this channel, I do budget-friendly DIYs. I show you step-by-step -step exactly how to do what I am doing so that you will take some inspiration from it and do your own. Make it your own. That's what it's all about. I believe in you. I bring you these projects because I know that you can make them. And according to the emails that I have been getting from you guys with the beautiful pieces that you were showing me and on Instagram, you most definitely can do these projects. 
I'm so happy to have you here. If you're a new subscriber, welcome. There's lots of Halloween videos for you to watch. I will be doing one big video with all of them in one place for your convenience, if you would like. If you want to share the video, that's also helpful. And I'd love to have you as part of my YouTube family. It means a lot to me that you're here when you could be anywhere. Which one of these projects was your favorite? Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you again very soon. Bye!